So the technique I've just demonstrated is the pendulum swing. This is one of my favorite uh, techniques with the kettlebells. Great for lateral strength, great for loading that glute need and for just loading the whole lateral chain. And also for learning how to disassociate shoulders and hips. So this is a, a fairly complex technique and not one that a lot of people do. Uh, so you probably haven't seen this many places. So I wanna uh, troubleshoot uh, kind of one of the main parts of this technique which is the disassociation of the shoulders and hips. And what that means is the shoulders are rotating independently of the hips. The hips are just sliding side to side. So the first part of the technique is just similar to like a skater, but we're just not leaving the ground. So it's just this hip slide. Notice as the hip slide, there is no rotation. This is hip rotation. Rotation is when one hip comes forward, the other hip retreats. One hip comes forward, the other hip retreats. A slide is when the hips stay square, stay straight ahead, and they slide side to side like a skater. Okay, so that's the first part of the technique, and you'll see how that integrates with, with what I'm saying is kind of one of the biggest uh, hurdles that people have to getting good at this technique. Now, the second piece is rotation from the shoulders. So the shoulders are rotating independently of the hips. So practice this just with your arms, all right? So it's important that we be able to disassociate the shoulders from the hips for any type of rotational movement. So, you know, when you're playing golf, throwing something, uh, you know, almost all athletic sport is, is rotational in nature. Uh, tennis is another one. So we need to learn how to disassociate here. Also, for the purpose of hitting the movement patterns and the neuromuscular systems that we want with the pendulum swing, you have to be able to disassociate shoulders and hips. So I've talked a lot about it. Let me show you what I see is happening that's wrong. Is people are rotating the shoulders with the hips. So see how like when I go to this side, both the right shoulder and right hip retreat and the left shoulder and left hip advance. So I'm rotating both shoulders and hips together. Now, be clear, I'm not saying you should never in life or in training or in sport, rotate your shoulders and hips together. There are a lot of techniques I like where you do that, but not with this technique, not with the pendulum swing. We are trying to really isolate this lateral hip explosiveness, this sliding, okay? And we're trying to also train trunk rotation independent of the hips. So we don't want that. So what you need to work on is sliding the hips while the shoulders rotate. Hip slides, shoulders rotate. So it looks like this, watch carefully here. From this angle first, my hips are just moving side to side. They are neither retreating or advancing, just side to side movement while my shoulders rotate. But I don't try to emphasize that rotation. It's just enough to focus on loading the hip to one side and loading the hip to the other, okay? Watch this. You'll be able to see how there isn't hip rotation. There's hip sliding. There's shoulders rotation though. So that's what you need to work on. So what I would suggest if you film yourself and you see that you're not disassociating in this way, just start the smaller movement. Maybe get the feet a little closer together and just start with sliding. And just having the bell, their shoulders in the bell, rotating from foot to foot. Okay, we don't need to have a big rotation to accomplish this, especially not in the beginning when you're just working on the technique. All right. Um, couple other things to consider are keeping the core braced throughout and making sure that you have a good posture when doing this. I don't want to see rounded back. I want to see a long extended straight spine out through the top of the head. And then the other thing that I want you to be cognizant of 
is having inside foot pressure. So when you're doing this, I don't want your ankle to roll over to the outside of your foot. I want you to be rooted in strong through the big toe, the inside of the ball of the foot, and the inside of the heel. All right, practice that technique. One of the biggest weapons you have or tools you have is to film yourself, watch it, be critical, and see if it matches up with the way that you see me doing the technique. All right, enjoy your practice.